Greetings to you on this day that the Lord has made, and these are the readings for day number 353. Zephaniah 1 and 2, Isaiah 56, and Revelation 10. The concluding words of Habakkuk are the most often quoted and memorized, and I cannot help but underline them for you by reading them again. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms, and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails, and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields, and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer." able to tread upon the heights. Now we turn to the book of Zephaniah, or as I will pronounce his name, Zephaniah. Constable tells us, Zephaniah means Yahweh hides or has hidden, or Yahweh's watchman, or Yahweh treasured. The uncertainty rises over the etymology of the prophet's name, which scholars dispute. I prefer Yahweh hides. Zephaniah was very likely the descendant of King Hezekiah, and he lived in the time of the reign of King Josiah. It seems likely that he preached to the upper echelons of society, and it is probable that he helped inspire Josiah in his reforms. And since, like Nahum some years earlier, Zephaniah prophesied against Nineveh, he was probably writing between 635 and 625 B.C. Like other prophets, he preached vehemently against idols. He also prophesied these important things. A faithful remnant will be delivered from captivity. The Gentile nations will be converted. One day people everywhere, not only in Jerusalem, will worship God. Zephaniah 1 The Lord gave this message to Zephaniah when Josiah, son of Ammon, was king of Judah. Zephaniah was the son of Cushi, son of Gedaliah, son of Amariah, son of Hezekiah. The Lord says, I will sweep away everything from the face of the earth. I will sweep away people and animals alike. I will sweep away the birds of the sky and the fish in the sea. I will reduce the wicked to heaps of rubble. And I will wipe humanity from the face of the earth, says the Lord. I will crush Judah and Jerusalem with my fist and destroy every last trace of their Baal worship. I will put an end to the idolatrous priests, so that even the memory of them will disappear. For they go up to their roofs and bow down to the sun, moon, and stars. They claim to follow the Lord, but then they worship Molech too. And I will destroy those who used to worship me, but now no longer do. They no longer ask for the Lord's guidance or seek my blessings." Stand in silence in the presence of the Sovereign Lord, for the awesome day of the Lord's judgment is near. The Lord has prepared His people for a great slaughter, and has chosen their executioners. The Lord says, On that day of judgment I will punish the leaders and princes of Judah and all those following pagan customs. Yes, I will punish those who participate in pagan worship ceremonies and those who fill their masters' houses with violence and deceit. On that day, says the Lord, a cry of alarm will come from the fish gate and echo throughout the new quarter of the city, and a great crash will sound from the hills." Wail in sorrow, all you who live in the market area, for all the merchants and traders will be destroyed. I will search with lanterns in Jerusalem's darkest corners to punish those who sit complacent in their sins. They think the Lord will do nothing to them, either good or bad. So their property will be plundered, their homes will be ransacked. They will build new homes, but never live in them. They will plant vineyards, but never drink wine from them. 
That terrible day of the Lord is near. Swiftly it comes, a day of bitter tears, a day when even strong men will cry out. It will be a day when the Lord's anger is poured out, a day of terrible distress and anguish, a day of ruin and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet calls and battle cries. Down go the walled cities and the strongest battlements. Because you have sinned against the Lord, I will make you grope around like the blind. Your blood will be poured into the dust, and your bodies will lie rotting on the ground. Your silver and gold will not save you on that day of the Lord's anger. For the whole land will be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. He will make a terrifying end of all the people on earth. Zephaniah 2 Gather together, yes, gather together, you shameless nation. Gather before judgment begins, before your time to repent is blown away like chaff. Act now before the fierce fury of the Lord falls and the terrible day of the Lord's anger begins. Seek the Lord, all who are humble, and follow His commands. Seek to do what is right and to live humbly. Perhaps even yet the Lord will protect you, protect you from his anger on that day of destruction. Gaza and Ashkelon will be abandoned, Ashdod and Ekron torn down. And what sorrow awaits you Philistines who live along the coast and in the land of Canaan, for this judgment is against you too. The Lord will destroy you until not one of you is left. The Philistine coast will become a wilderness pasture, a place of shepherd camps and enclosures for sheep and goats. The remnant of the tribe of Judah will pasture there. They will rest at night in the abandoned houses in Ashkelon. For the Lord their God will visit his people in kindness and restore their prosperity again. The Lord says, I have heard the taunts of the Moabites and the insults of the Ammonites, mocking my people and invading their borders. Now, as surely as I live, says the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, Moab and Ammon will be destroyed, destroyed as completely as Sodom and Gomorrah. Their land will become a place of stinging nettles, salt pits, and eternal desolation. The remnant of my people will plunder them and take their land. They will receive the wages of their pride, for they have scoffed at the people of the Lord of heaven's armies. The Lord will terrify them as he destroys all the gods in the land. Then nations around the world will worship the Lord, each in their own land. The Lord says, You Ethiopians will also be slaughtered by my sword, and the Lord will strike the lands of the north with his fist, destroying the land of Assyria. He will make its capital Nineveh, a desolate wasteland, parched like a desert. The proud city will become a pasture for flocks and herds, and all sorts of wild animals will settle there. The desert owl and screech owl will roost on its ruined columns, their calls echoing through the gaping windows. Rubble will block all the doorways, and the cedar paneling will be exposed to the weather. This is the boisterous city once so secure. I am the greatest, it boasted. No other city can compare with me. But now look how it has become an utter ruin, a haven for wild animals. Everyone passing by will laugh in derision and shake a defiant fist. We turn to Isaiah 56. Rather than commenting on... Isaiah 55, verse 11, as I bet some of you thought I would, I'm picking this section to remind you of instead. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. 
For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I was struck recently how true it is that God's thoughts are always counterintuitive for humans. Take, for instance, what God says in this chapter. Come to me. Seek for me while I may be found. Come, I am offering eternal food and water for free. You don't have to earn it. It takes someone like Paul to tell us why God would do this. But even with explanations in God's word, you can go to a huge number of churches who vastly misunderstand how God wants us to fully believe in him for our salvation and not trust in our own merit. Another way we misunderstand is by saying that free food and water mean that people don't need to repent. But in this chapter, God says, Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. That was in Isaiah 55. Now, Isaiah 56. This is what the Lord says. Be just and fair to all. Do what is right and good, for I am coming soon to rescue you and to display my righteousness among you. Blessed are all those who are careful to do this. Blessed are those who honor my Sabbath days of rest and keep themselves from doing wrong. Don't let foreigners who commit themselves to the Lord say, The Lord will never let me be a part of his people. And don't let the eunuch say, I'm a dried-up tree with no children and no future. For this is what the Lord says, I will bless those eunuchs who keep my Sabbath days holy and who choose to do what pleases me and commit their lives to me. I will give them within the walls of my house a memorial and a name far greater than sons and daughters could give. For the name I give them is an everlasting one. It will never disappear. I will also bless foreigners who commit themselves to the Lord who serve him and love his name, who worship him and do not desecrate the Sabbath day of rest, and who hold fast to my covenant. I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem. I will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices, because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations." For the Sovereign Lord, who brings back the outcasts of Israel, says, I will bring others, too, besides my people Israel. Come, wild animals of the field. Come, wild animals of the forest. Come and devour my people. For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, his shepherds, are blind and ignorant. They are like silent watchdogs that give no warning when danger comes. They love to lie around, sleeping and dreaming. Like greedy dogs, they are never satisfied. They are ignorant shepherds, all following their own path and intent on personal gain. Come, they say, let's get some wine and have a party. Let's all get drunk. Then tomorrow we'll do it again and have an even bigger party. We turn now to Revelation 10. Note that after some huge judgments in Revelation, such as at the end of chapter 6, the people on earth recognize God's hand and react to the Almighty in some way, such as trying to hide from God. But in others, they close their eyes to him such as in chapter 9. Quote, but the people who did not die in these plagues still refused to repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. They continued to worship demons and idols made of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that can neither see nor hear nor walk. 
and they did not repent of their murders or their witchcraft or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Revelation 10 Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, surrounded by a cloud, with a rainbow over his head. His face shone like the sun, and his feet were like pillars of fire, and in his hand was a small scroll that had been opened. He stood with his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and he gave a great shout like the roar of a lion. And when he shouted, the seven thunders answered. When the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, Keep secret what the seven thunders said, and do not write it down. Then the angel I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand toward heaven. He swore an oath in the name of the one who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and everything in them, the earth and everything in it, and the sea and everything in it. He said, There will be no more delay. When the seventh angel blows his trumpet, God's mysterious plan will be fulfilled. It will happen just as he announced it to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice from heaven spoke to me again. Go and take the open scroll from the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll. He said, Yes, take it and eat it. It will be sweet as honey in your mouth, but it will turn sour in your stomach. So I took the small scroll from the hand of the angel, and I ate it. It was sweet in my mouth, but when I swallowed it, it turned sour in my stomach. Then I was told, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Sovereign Lord, we trust in you that, like the angel said, you will fulfill your mysterious plan. And, Father, I thank you that your plan, as expressed in Isaiah 56, includes giving blessings to those who were never able to have children. You care for people, all kinds of people. And also in that same place, you care for foreigners. And that would be true of me and probably most of my listeners who are not ethnic Jews. We were foreigners to your covenants and your promises and you've brought us near through Christ. You will bring us to your holy mountain of Jerusalem, and you will fill us with joy in your house of prayer. Your temple will be called a house of prayer for the nations. Lord, we thank you that it says of you, you bring back the outcasts of Israel. And, you say, I will bring others too besides my people Israel. Thank you, Father, that you have included us and called us. O Lord, today, help us to keep our eyes focused on Christ and to reflect his glory and to live as citizens of heaven. 